I'm here today with Rachel Kelly. She is the mother of five children and the author of Black Rainbow, a book about her own experiences with depression. Following the publication of her book, she has gone around the country helping people to understand and come to terms with mental illness and depression. Thank you for coming today, Rachel. Thank you very much. You know, um, depression manifests itself in so many different ways. Can you tell us some of the typical symptoms or what do people commonly suffer from when they have depression? Yes, so what I'm talking about is not just saying I'm depressed or I'm feeling down, I'm talking about clinical depression, which is an illness like cancer or diabetes, and uh, usually you would suffer the symptoms of it for two weeks, which would be what a doctor would think that you have now got depression or you're starting a depressive episode, and the symptoms typically would include insomnia, trouble going to sleep, waking up early, uh, it could also include nausea because often it's anxiety driven so you feel nauseous so you throw up because it triggers an old fight or flight response. Uh, often you have head pain, uh, bad sort of anxiety with um, catastrophic thinking and this manifests itself in headaches and, and then for other people sometimes it's an overwhelming sense of lassitude so you're absolutely right it's on a spectrum both in severity but also in terms of different symptoms. But the usual rule, as I say, if, if some of these symptoms are presenting for more than two weeks, at that point, you, 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 know, you should be seeking help. a diagnosis, yeah. yeah. You know, we parents, we joke around all the time that we can't even come down with flu, for heaven's sake, because the whole household would fall apart. What mm. happens in a family when one of the parents gets depressed? Mm. Well, I think putting depression in, in the context it's an illness like anything else, you know, what happens when a parent has any kind of illness, I mean, it is a bit of a crisis situation. Potentially catastrophic. Absolutely, and I think um, families struggle. And um, I think the recent numbers are that three out of five people will at some point be caring for somebody with a mental illness in their family. So it's a huge issue. Where do people get help? How do they know what to do? Um, and, um, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not easy at all. I mean, we don't really live in a world of kind of extended families. You're lucky if that is the case. Um, extended friends. I think talking about it so that people are aware that in fact it's an illness and people are going to need help, just they like they need help for somebody if they've gone down with something else. And often the kind of help you need is very practical. Someone to do the washing up. Yes. Pick the children up from yes. school. Yes. You know, all these things are going to happen. You Make could, dinner. You, yeah. You, you, you know, you'll, you could be in bed unable to function with depression, just like if you'd had a, you know, cancer or anything else. So it's, it, you know, it is very... Um, it's the help you need is very yeah. practical. Yeah. While I can see it's difficult for any family, yeah. Um, if you have a partner or a, or a mother nearby or something, there is somebody to help make dinner or to pick the children up. Yeah. But I really worry about single parents. You know, what, do, what does a single parent do? Yeah. They have only themselves to rely on, and that's got to cause a lot of um, stress already. Mm. So you might even think there'd be, they might be more likely to suffer from depression because it's all mm. on them. Mm. What does a single what does a family do with a single who, when there's a single parent involved? Well, yes, you're spot on. It is particularly hard for a single parent. I think if you don't have, as I say, an extended family or friends you can turn to, um, right now some of the mental health charities are trying to fill the gap um, because there have been cutbacks in services and support. And there are charities that are absolutely trying to, trying to help out exactly the kind of people that you're talking about. And I'm involved in quite a few of them. Um, but, um, I mean, I think another thing is that more that we talk about it, the more, as I say, that we know that it's, it's, it's t to be taken seriously, um, you know, it should be getting the kind of support and help that, that physical illnesses get. And right now it's the poor relation, it's the Cinderella in the health world. Yeah. yeah. I also wonder, Rachel, do parents with depression get sort of the depression double whammy? You not only get depression, but then you've got this sort of unbelievable guilt because you're not looking after your family. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because it's something I feel really passionately about. You, you shouldn't feel guilty if you've got depression. It's not your fault. Just walk away from that sense of shame. Um, you know, you wouldn't feel shamed if you had, as I say, diabetes or cancer. Um, the problem is, is that people do feel it is partly their fault and there's no denying it. And actually it is a little bit more nuanced because there are things you can do to look after your mental health. Just like, as I say, if you had diabetes, you, you watch your sugar intake. Mm -hmm. So, you know, having said there are things you can do, 
you can do that in a very positive way. It doesn't need to, you shouldn't be feeling shamed or guilty that you've come down with depression. Yeah. Do you know, some of my friends, um, I have had friends who've had depression, mm. but I've also had friends who have thought that they're depressed and actually it turns out that they're anemic or they needed vitamin D. Mm. Yeah. You know, I, these symptoms can sort of ebb and flow and yes, match no, other I mean, symptoms. That, I think that's right. I mean, I think at the sort of generalized sort of low mood, I mean, we know that, that this often a characteristic of, as you say, of anemia and a good GP might check out kind of some very basic things ahead of giving you a diagnosis of depression check your iron levels for example another thing that affects mood a lot particularly going into winter so it's very relevant now is low low vitamin d mm -hmm. which we know affects mood and um most people are deficient in vitamin d which is not enough sunshine so uh, you know uh, you know if you can get your gp to give you a, a blood test and just to check out those levels and if you can proactively take a, an iron supplement or vitamin d supplement they should be helping with your mood anyway get those out the way first and then if you're still presenting with the symptoms then you know, your diagnosis is a bit clearer. Yeah. So if somebody is either suffering from depression now or um, in the future, mm. uh, what would you recommend they do? What What's their okay, well, way I think, to handle um, it? As I say, if, if, you've, if you've had symptoms for more than two weeks, you need to get to see your GP, get a diagnosis. If you're not well enough to get there on your own, get a friend or a relation to take you. And then depending on the severity of your symptoms, hopefully you will get a referral to a psychiatrist. Um, hopefully you might start getting some talking therapy and some talking help. So the, the, the therapy of choice at the moment is cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm. And there are courses of that. Um, again, depending, if you're very unwell, you're not going to be able to do some of these kind of self-help things. But there are plenty of mindfulness courses, which we now know are effective for some people. What I would say is we we don't there isn't one magic bullet most people find that a kind of range of strategies is what helps them you know there's a lot of talk around mindfulness it doesn't work for everybody antidepressants they don't work for everybody um, you know exercise it's a great idea it's not enough for everybody so what I found after a long battle is I, I use a whole different variety of approaches yes Rachel Kelly thank you very much for joining us today if you take a look at my website, you will see another interview that I've done with Rachel, which is all about her own experience with depression. Also, uh, there's a lovely article from Rachel and a link from my website to her website. Thank you.